Hi everyone and welcome to my video teaching session which I've called Fantastic Bacteria and Ways to Kill Them. Uh, my name is Lois Ovenlana and I am a PhD student from Balliol College. Uh, I work in the Department of Zoology and study one of the oldest and smallest organisms in the world, bacteria. I mainly study drugs called antibiotics which we use to treat bacterial infections and also how an, uh, bacteria can avoid getting killed by these drugs. So today I'm going to teach you about these antibiotics, introduce you to the topic of antibiotics resistance and also get you to participate in a couple of activities. So let's get started. So before we get to our objectives, I just want to tell you a little bit more about bacteria. So these are single cell organisms that are incredibly small, so we can only see them under devices called um, microscopes, which is a device that's here at the middle. Uh, and there are many different types of bacteria that exist, uh, and they come in many different shapes and sizes. So some are rod-shaped, like E. coli, and others are more like spheres that bunch together to form like grape-like structures, like Staphylococcus aureus. And also many of these bacteria have filamented structures on one end called flagellum that help them swim through a uh, media, um, like salmonella. So they can be found anywhere in the world, and in fact, actually, lots of them live on us. So over here is a picture of a child's hand that has been put on a Petri dish, which is a dish that uh, scientists use to grow bacteria in the lab. And this is after the child had been playing outside, and you can see that there are many different uh, bacteria that are growing on their hand. Um, so now most of these bacteria are harmless and some can even help us uh, in multiple different ways like help us digest our food or even keep our skin healthy. So these bacteria are good bacteria and they often uh, provide benefits to our body so they're protective or commensal bacteria. But some of these bacteria can actually be quite deadly and cause a variety of diseases from diarrhea to cholera and even the bubonic plague. So it's important that we control these bacteria so that we don't get sick. So these are bad pathogenic bacteria. And a way to control these bacteria is to use a medicine or a drug called antibiotics, uh, which can either stop the bacteria from growing or just kill them. So now let's move on to the objectives of this session. So first we're going to start off with a bit of a history lesson where we learn about how antibiotics were discovered and what life was like before them. Then we're going to look into how these drugs work. And then finally, we're going to see how bacteria can avoid uh, being affected by these drugs through antibiotic resistance. So during the course of this session, we're also going to be doing multiple tasks related to the topics uh, that we talk about. So keep an eye out for those. So now we're going to uh, focus on the discovery and also the use of antibiotics. So first, let's go back in time to the 1920s. So back then and also before then, there were no effective treatments of bacterial infections such as pneumonia and gonorrhea and even diarrhea. So infections that are so easily treated today used to kill thousands of people and hospitals were full of people who got sick simply from getting a cut or scratch that became infected with bacteria afterwards, and doctors could do uh, little for them. So that was uh, until 1928, where a professor in London called Alexander Fleming, who was a Scottish professor, noted uh, that the bacteria on his Petri dish were being killed by something that a mold growing on his plate had created. So if you look at the bottom left-hand figure, at the bottom of the picture are a bunch of bacteria growing on this Petri dish. And on the top of the picture is a, pen, uh, is a mold that was also growing on this dish. So closer to the mold, you can see that very few few bacteria are growing, whereas they are growing quite well further away from the mold. So this led uh, Fleming to wonder what it was that was killing this bacteria. And with the help of other scientists, including Oxford scientists uh, Howard Flory and Ernst Chain, they were able to isolate what the mold was making uh, that was killing the bacteria, which led to the discovery of an antibiotic called penicillin. Now for your first task, I want you to Google the antibiotic penicillin and see if you can find out which kind of bacteria they can kill better. There are two bacteria types that I want you to look at, gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. And the question is, which one do they kill better? Bonus points if you can also figure out the differences between these two types of bacteria, but if you don't manage, don't worry, because I will explain those differences shortly. Okay, so penicillin kills 
gram-positive bacteria better. So well done if you figured this out. So now let's look into the differences between these two types of bacteria. I won't go into too much detail, but the main difference is down to how their cell walls and cell membranes are structured. So like plant cells, bacteria have both cell walls and cell membranes, but instead of cellulose, bacteria cell walls are made up of a polymer called peptidoglycan, which is shown in purple here. Um, in gram-positive cells, they have only one cell membrane covered by a very thick layer of peptidoglycan, but in gram-negative cells, they have two cell membranes, an outer and an inner membrane, with a thin layer of peptidoglycan between these. Um, so the way penicillin works is that it interferes with the process of making these peptidoglycan cell walls, so it attacks the cell walls. And um, in gram-negative cells, the presence of this outer membrane makes it more difficult for penicillin to reach the peptidoglycan layer, which is why um, penicillin works better for gram-positive cells where there is no layer. So this brings us to our second topic of how antibiotics work. So there are many different types of antibiotics that exist and they all work in many different ways. So generally antibiotics can either be bacteriostatic or bactericidal. So bacteriostatic antibiotics just slow down the growth of bacteria, but the bacteria themselves are still alive. So if the antibiotic is removed, the bacteria will be able to grow again. However, bactericidal antibiotics actually kill bacteria. Antibiotics can also be broad or narrow spectrum. So broad spectrum uh, means that one antibiotic can kill many different types of bacteria, whereas narrow spectrum means that they can only kill one certain type of bacteria. So over here, only the yellow bacteria is killed, whereas here, many different types of bacteria are being killed. So I want you to have a little think as to which version could be better. And remember uh, what I said before about many different types of bacteria existing. So the answer is narrow spectrum antibiotics. Although broad spectrum antibiotics are extremely useful, they can end up killing those helpful bacteria that I talked about before, the good commensal bacteria, such as bacteria that can help us digest food and keep our skin healthy. Whereas narrow spectrum antibiotics can only target, uh, sometimes only target certain pathogenic bacteria. So they're much better to use in the clinic because you only kill the bad bacteria, whereas you leave the good bacteria alone. Another important thing to note is that antibiotics do not work on viruses. So viruses hijack our body's cells in order to make more copies of themselves. Antibiotics do not target our body's cells. And also viruses have a completely different structure so bacteria uh, to bacteria. So antibiotics don't even uh, recognize uh, most of the viral structures. So they don't work directly on viruses either. So a viral infection cannot be treated with antibiotics. So now let's move on to our second task. So here there are four different types of mechanism of actions that antibiotics can have. So two of them are bacteriostatic, so they stop or slow growth, whereas the other two are bactericidal, so they kill bacteria. So I want you to try and figure out uh, which categories um, uh, these four mechanisms fall under. So keep in mind that what cells need to grow versus what cells need to survive. And also you can use Google to help you figure this out. Okay, so let's go through this. Um, so the answer is that the red ones are bactericidal and the green ones are bacteriostatic. Um, so generally, bacteriostatic antibiotics simply interfere with the processes needed for cells to multiply, but not the processes needed for them to survive. So interfering with DNA replication means that you can't make more DNA, but you can still make more cells. So this is why um, the last one is bacteriostatic. This is also the case for protein. The bacteria cannot make more protein, but it already has the, a protein uh, in it that 
allows it to survive. So this is not uh, the same uh, for the red ones because cells uh, cannot survive without cell walls and cell membranes. So these antibiotics are creating holes in the cell membrane or destroying the bacteria cell walls, which means that they end up killing the cells as they cannot live without these structures. Okay, so lastly, we come up to the topic of antibiotic resistance. So antibiotic resistance is when bacteria find ways to grow and survive in the presence of antibiotics. So this is a problem because it means that dangerous bacteria can uh, continue to cause infections and no longer be treated. And also sadly, it is becoming much more common. So each year in the US, at least 2.8 million people uh, get an antibiotic resistant infection. And also recent reports in the UK say that about 170 patients are diagnosed with antibiotic resistant infections every day. So if we're not able to treat it, then it can become a big problem as these people can get sicker. So um, when an antibiotic is given to a bacterial population, some bacteria already have resistance to this antibiotic just simply by chance. So in this figure, bacteria that are normal are just uh, orange, whereas bacteria that are resistant are blue. So when you add an antibiotic, they kill the normal bacteria, but the resistant one managed to survive. And if the, anti uh, if the antibiotic is still uh, present in the uh, bacterial population, the resistant bacteria is able to grow and take over. And also they can spread um, their resistance um, to other bacteria if the resistance is uh, in small mobilizable DNA segments that they can pass on to each other. So there are many reasons why antibiotic resistance can also spread. So uh, overuse of antibiotics means that uh, bacteria um, that have resistance mechanisms become more common because if there's antibiotics everywhere, then the resistant bacteria are able to survive better. Um, this is what happened in, with penicillin and actually quite a lot of bacteria are now resistant to penicillin because it was the first antibiotic to be discovered and was used so much uh, during war times and also uh, in hospitals that now a lot of bacteria are resistant to them. Animals can also be fed antibiotics, um, leading to bacteria that are inside them to become resistant and spread to humans if we eat contaminated meat. And also generally due to poor hygiene or antibiotics being released into the environment uh, through sewage systems, there can also be um, antibiotic resistant um, bacteria emerging from multiple areas. Right, so we've now come on to our final task. So uh, I want you to quickly search for ways that uh, bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics. So there are many ways bacteria can become resistant. Um, so have fun searching around um, and don't worry if uh, the mechanism that you found is not on this list because there are so many different ways and I'm only gonna list a few. So enjoy. Okay, so like I said, there are many ways bacteria can become resistant and I will only list down three here. Uh, so bacteria can use pumps uh, that pump antibiotics back out of the cell. So if antibiotics come in the cell and uh, can work on like the DNA or stop protein uh, uh, synthesis, then the, antibiotic, uh, the bacteria can actually just have a pump that grabs the antibiotic and throws it back out of the cell. And that way the antibiotic no longer works uh, on the bacteria anymore. Um, they can actually also uh, use enzymes to break down antibiotics. So uh, these enzymes can actually just be within the bacterial cell, um, as in here, where they break uh, uh, down uh, antibiotics that come into the cell, or they can actually be secreted out by the cell and then break uh, down antibiotics that are present in the medium. So like even for uh, antibiotics that attack the cell membrane, if uh, the bacteria produces an enzyme and secretes it and, and throws it outside the cell, then the antibiotics around the bacteria uh, no longer are work because they are destroyed. 
Um, and then the third method that I've listed here is altering the target of antibiotics. So over here we have two bacteria, one that has a normal cell wall, and uh, the antibiotics, which are here in yellow, then attack the cell wall. And then we have a second bacteria, which has a slightly different cell wall, and now the antibiotic no longer recognizes the cell wall and so doesn't attack the bacteria. So, uh, and this is a way for the bacteria to get resistance to it. So all of these methods lead to resistance, which is a problem that uh, scientists are currently trying to solve. So um, we're going to end it here. And so just to summarize, the discovery of antibiotics in the 1920s was an amazing scientific breakthrough that allowed us to easily treat a multitude of infections that used to kill thousands of people. And there are many different types of bacteria and also many different types of antibiotics. So they can be bactericidal or bacteriostatic, broad or narrow spectrum, and they can also work in a variety of different ways. And lastly, antibiotic resistance is a large problem to human health since it causes bacteria to evade the activity of these life-saving drugs and uh, in multiple different ways. And also antibiotic resistance can spread due to overuse and misuse of antibiotics. So that's it. So thank you very much for listening uh, to my talk and also for participating in the exercises. I hope you enjoyed uh, what we discussed today and uh, the exercises that you did as well. So there's a last optional exercise, uh, which I have put on Google Forms. So use the link um, uh, up here to go to that exercise, which is called uh, Antibiotic Detective. So this puts all that we have learned together, all of our tasks and all of the uh, topics that we covered today. Um, and um, uh, allows you to uh, find out what sort of antibiotic to use on a patient based on the information that we have. So to use a link to go to the Google Doc uh, that will let you do some bacteria detective work and take your time with this exercise as it has multiple parts. Um, I've also included links to various videos and websites that you can also watch or read if you want to learn more. The videos in particular are quite short and very informative and they provide a lot of other uh, sources that you can then follow up on. And lastly, um, there I've also including a, included a link to another website called uh, Drugs vs. Bugs, which is an antibiotic resistance uh, board game, which is a, a game that people in my lab developed. Um, it's really fun to play, and there's also a bunch of resources on the website um, that allow you to learn more about bacteria and antibiotics, especially the specific names of bacteria and antibiotics if you're interested in that. So feel free to go check it out. Thanks again for listening, and have a good day.